my name is Hayden, and I'm going to be performing my own poem called Watching Time. Tick tock, tick tock, round the clock they go. Twice a day the hands shall meet again, around they go. Tick tock, tick tock, away the time it goes. Every day the hands shall meet, away the time it flows. Tick tock, tick tock. Where will I go? The time keeps moving. Help, help, the time will stop. It won't go. Tick tock, tick tock. Time is running out. The hands are closed. Help, help, I can't, can't tune them out. Tick tock, tick tock. Time is running out. Every hour, every hour. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick, 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 tick. Tick tock, tick tock, round the clock they went. My hours over, away, away I go. <laughs> Hello, my name is Nick Pancrax, and I will be performing something that I, uh, or a parody that I made of Old Town Road called The Turkey's Throat. Uh, Yeah, dude, bro, you really suck now. Can't no turkey tell me nothing that makes me not want to kill him. Can't no turkey tell me nothing that makes me not want to kill him. Eating turkey gizzards can strive like a lizard. Killing three a time, I'm like a turkey killing blizzard. My chicken is my buddy. I love him and he's fluffy. Turkey's full of fat. Yeah, it makes them taste real yummy. Can no turkey tell me nothing? It makes me not want to kill them. Can't no turkey tell me nothing? And I want to kill. Yeah, I'm going to take my knife to the turkey's throat. I'm going to cook till I can't no more. I'm going to take my knife to the turkey's throat. I'm going to cook till I can't no more. Bam dead, bam dead, shooting turkeys in the head. All the turkeys better learn, better watch when they tread. Turkeys got a habit, loud and really ugly noises. They gobble when they're hiding and regret their stupid choices. God knows turkeys, they can't fight back. I'm like this in the killer, shoot them bang like that. Just wanna take my knife to the turkey's throat. I wanna kill till I can't no more. I'm gonna take my knife to the turkey's throat. I'm gonna kill till I can't no more. I'm gonna take my knife to the turkey's throat. I'm gonna kill till I can't no more. is a poem I made, has a very long name, can't actually remember it, but, so we're gonna use a short one, uh, Humidity. <sighs> Wrote this very late at night, so neither of us know where this is going. 
Two things I learned when I was very young. First, I have it quite good in life. The sun is rather shiny and no one dares to judge me on any aspect of my color or income. And despite some despicably boorish acts of discrimination based on the way I dress and love, I find myself well equipped for a joyous existence. Because any day that I see ash falling somewhere else, a mother is choking on solid blocks of coal, and the volcanoes erupt with hateful spurts of abhorring and sadistic embers litter the ground once once brimming cradles, but I am happy. Second, because of the first, I have exceptionally humid breath. For inside of me, I like to think I am powered by small water wheels, and when I speak, my words are wet, kind, and emotion condensates and drops onto the water wheels, turning them pleasantly, peacefully. And although the tranquil turn of the wood gave me the energy to dance and speak and run and be, it wasn't enough. Because while I saw green grass somewhere else, the dirt was ground into the back of a child and covering them was pus-filled skin sacks popping and reforming like boiling water. And they turned to us with no moisture to spare and their breath was dry and raspy. We told them we were coming. They could see that water did not fall because our voices were faulty. And one day I decided my voice wasn't going to be faulty. And I kept talking, because bigoted people rose in numbers, but I had to show them that I rose in crowds, and with every puff I let from my lungs, liquid bone pour from my ribs, spinning the water wheels with a great deal of force, but I came home fatigued, weary, my skin dry from the water I sucked from my limbs, and although I was wrinkling and parched, somewhere a father was shriveling, withered, wilted. So I continued to pour blood from my linguistic beratement, turning the water wheels. I chose standing and attending, participating, until one of my best friends said, You are so selfish. How could you possibly think that you are so important that you would sacrifice your health, your sleep, you would think you are so principal and major in this world to try? And this is not what they said, and not what they meant. But when you are 83 hours awake running on caffeine and gravity, words of worry and caring start to sound like words of pessimism and deduction and loathing. This is when I learned of a new way to harvest energy. It turns out fire burns everything. And where water was missing in my friends and myself, they were no lacking fuel. So I threw every word I spoke and every insult I heard, every friend I had in a furnace which was lodged in my stomach right below the strange wooden circles of unknown use. While that fire burned hot, 83 hours turned into 100, and sleep was just a thing for people who didn't care enough to try. And if I was to be selfish, I would wear every tie I saw and hang myself on their apathy and save every goddamn American, Asian, African, European, Australian, minority, cow, goat, chicken while burning them all. But it turns out fire goes cold when it wants to. And the infinite expanse of ocean I pushed aside with my hands were just a little too big and a little too infinite. No matter how much you try to set flame to water, it just is. And I have to tell you, the moment you decide you'll live with cold flames and broken furnaces is the moment just before you're crying, consuming everything in the house in hour 392, while your friends try to find glass doors you melted hours ago. And then my best friend said, hey, I went to this meeting the other day, I learned a bit of what you do, and I gotta say, you bring a little bit of voice to our community, and pal, I love you. I want you to know I support you, because I have a lot I'm stressed about too, and we should talk. And I'm not sure if that's what he said, but at hour 393, I was floored. Because his words were rivered, rivers, glistening, sparkling, salty, illustrious, marvelous rivers, crashing through my body and putting out flames, and strange wooden wheel equipment of once known use began to turn. I learned that although bigots rose in numbers, me and him, we rose in crowds. And all at once, he pushed infinite oceans to side and let it flash back over us, crashing in peaceful tranquility over our voices. Because water is just a little too big and a little too infinite. And no matter how much you try to set flame to water, it just is. Thank you.